civil society is relatively new in Libya, and the activists that we've met, while they're enthusiastic and creative, they lack experience in managing and building community-based organizations. And these are skills that are important when trying to inform citizens or to advocate for change. Well, that's right. And so the anti rida project was conceived to provide support to these organizations in developing their internal uh, capacities to manage organizations. And so looking at things like policies that they may have that govern internal uh, human resource management or financial management, how they recruit and uh, support their volunteer base, but also how to conceive and develop proposals and projects, how to develop the monitoring and evaluation systems that are important mm -hmm. for accountability. Uh, so, whether you're an organization that's working in the field of disabilities or community reconciliation mm -hmm. or uh, entrepreneurialism, these are important skills that your organization should have. Absolutely. And the Institute for War and Peace Reporting recognizes that these are important skills and this anti-rata program is being implemented by them with support from the UK government. And it started off with research, comprehensive research to look at the operating environment all over Libya for civil society organizations. We wanted to know what the challenges and the opportunities were for civil society. Then we looked at 20 organizations from around the country and did in-depth analysis assessments of their organizational and human capacity so that we could design a training program that was targeted to their specific needs to help them implement projects at the local level to meet the needs of their citizens. Exactly, and, and what's really important to know is that there are so many organizations all over Libya doing wonderful things. And some of the organizations that we worked with on this project are youth organizations that are supporting youth development in communities around the country. Uh, organizations that are working to promote peace and reconciliation, organizations that are working with women with disabilities, and some organizations that are working on citizenship and human rights issues as well. Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, it's really great to see our, our Libyan partners in the room. Again, it's been some months since I've seen all of you, but I've been following your work uh, through the project, and I'm really impressed and really pleased with how we've been able to support you as partners, and as a result, uh, the, the work and the progress uh, that you have made. We developed the anti rider program as a response to several gaps that we saw in the development sector in Libya. Um, and this this design, this project design, was, was born out of several years of doing programming in Libya uh, with both media and also with civil society. Um, I think broadly, anti rida was designed to address or to support organizations that were um, either gender focused or led by women, organizations that were frequently working um, with very few resources um, and very little support in, in the communities at a grassroots level. Uh, the program addresses, you know, not only the gender component and the need uh, to support women and girls in their participation in their communities, but also, um, you know, really tried to focus on organizations that were um, you know, working outside of the main urban centers uh, that may not have access to the type of activities or the type of trainings that the international community was regularly providing, um, you know, to, to the civil society sector in Libya. And the lack of women in senior positions in both private and public sector, right? So when we're talking about the challenges these are, we're all agreed that these are the three major ones, or the three... I think priorities. with this project, what we really wanted to do was a, a couple different things. We wanted to make these, these small organizations more resilient. We wanted to give them some kind of organizational um, capacity, some administrative backbone that allowed them to, you know, to develop and, um, you know, operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And that could be anything as basic as making a schedule. 
or making a monthly budget or staffing or you know understanding you know what the overall mission of that organization might be and the tools that they needed to um, you know to to achieve that mission uh, the other goal was to you know promote gender rights gender equality uh, to really support the greater involvement and engagement of of women and girls in their community on a political level, a social level, uh, you know, a commercial level, um, or a cultural level. But I think also to to bring men into the picture as well, uh, to get the men in these communities to understand that you know that there's a whole other half of that community that they need to engage with, uh, and that you know overall this is you know th this is a good thing. It's a good thing for them. It's a good thing for their families. And it's a good thing for the communities within which they live. One of the key objectives of this program was to provide um, a, a number of female-led CSOs focused on key um, gender issues um, that could continue to conduct the work with much less international support and sustain that progress and process for the many, many years to come. I think one of the, the ways in which Anta Reader has, has approached this, which has been quite unique, is to ensure that there is a clear evidence base supporting their work, followed by capacity building of the various different CSOs, but then longer term mentoring of these CSOs as they implement their own projects, and then hopefully, in the last phase, coalesce um, into one larger group that can um, elevate the various different issues um, and increase their voice, the, the level um, and the pitch of their voice. يعني المرأة لما تقع عليها عنف من هذا النوع المفترض أنها تتجه لي مكان صح تطلع فيه الحماية والرعاية الصحية والنفسية الاجتماعية وكل عمتها هذا المكان إذا كان مركز مش حتبدأ بأمنية حالية العنف بالنسبة في ليبيا العنف القائم على النوع الاجتماعي للمرأة هو موجود على الاثنين للأمانة يعني يقع على الرجال ويقع على النساء ولكن طبيعة الحال يقع على المرأة أكثر من الرجل سهيلة الجهمي منظمة نتاج لتنمية قدرات المرأة من بنغازي نشاطنا هو متخصص في الدعم النفسي والاجتماعي والاستشارات القانونية طبعا نحن عندنا فريق متخصص في المنظمة عندنا مكتب اجتماعي ومكتب الخصائية النفسيات بالإضافة إلى المحامية في المنظمة لما جي السيدة عندنا في المركز فهي تجمع أول شيء مع الخصائية الاجتماعية وهي عندها أسئلة مجموعة نحن نسموه فيها دراسة الحالة فالخصائية الاجتماعية بعدها هي توجه أو تقرر لو أنها محتاجة تحويل على أخصائية نفسية أم لا في نفس الوقت إحنا نعطي فيهم تدريب اللي هو اللغة الإنجليزية والكمبيوتر وآخر شيء دورة صيانة الموبايل التدريب هذا من خلالها تحصل السيدة على شهادة تقدر تشتغل بها فنحن نكون هنا عالجنا مشكلتين اللي هي مشكلة نفسية والمشكلة الاقتصادية في نفس الوقت للسيدة تأثير برنامج أنتي رائدة على المجتمع أو على الناتج الحقيقي كان هو قصص النجاح اللي خرجت من المشروع وعدد السيدات اللي دربناهم إحنا في الأرض الواقع دربنا عدد أربعين سيدة على على صيانة الموبايل وفعلا في عدد من السيدات بدأت مشروع مشاريعها الخاصة بها في سيدات اشتركوا مع بعضهم وداروا زي المحل لتصليح صيانة الموبايل وفي سيدات بدوا عن طريق المنزل يشتغلوا في سيدات 
عن طريق اصدقائهم وجيرانهم فهم يصلحوا في الموبايلات في الوسط نتاعهم فالناتج اللي حنا نلمسوا فيه هو ناتج قصص النجاح اللي حققناها مع السيدات بالنسبة لإحدى القصص النجاح اللي عندنا في المنظمة طبعا بدون ذكر أسماء لأن مواضيع هذينا لأن فيهن أشياء نفسية وكذا فنحن نعتمدوا في مبدأ السرية في المنظمة فعندنا سيدة كانت جت المنظمة كانت نفسيتها منهارة فإحنا لما اشتغلت معها الخصائية النفسية وقعدنا نتابعه في حالة السيدة فلاحظنا تطور يعني حتى هي كانت انطوائية وكانت عندها اكتئاب وكانت ما ترقدش في الليل لكن لما جلست الدعم النفسي اللي خذته مع الخصائية فالخصائية لاحظت تغيير في حالتها حتى إن هي اشتركت في دورة صيانة الموبايل كانت رافضة في الأول لما جت جلست مع الخصائية ف مع المتابعة وكذا فهي دخلت دورة صيانة الموبايل ولما تخرجت منها حاليا قاعدة تشتغل هي يعني دارت مشروعها الخاص بها يعني عالجناها من الناحية النفسية إن هي كانت كأن أنقذنا روح يعني إحنا بعد حالات الانتحار محاولات الانتحار اللي هي تعرضت لهم فنحن شفنا ان هذه يعني احدى ابرز قصص النجاح حتى لو ساعدنا سيده هذه بس من ضمن المشروع كلها هذه انا ترضينا يعني في المنظمه. خرجوا منها والقصه اصبحت الكارثه حتى الام اثرت دور. تاثير الوضع بعد اصدار بعد اصدار اللي هي رموز تم اضافتها في رف القيد حرمت الام من التصويت في الانتخابات وحرمت من التعرف عليها في المنظومات يعني في منظومه منظومه التشجيع امل الناني رئيس جمعيه الليبيه وابن غريب رؤيتها ضمان حق الليبيات وجوزات التغيير الليبي وترسيخ حق المواطنه طبعا كجمعيه ليبيه وابن غريب تخدم من 2014 اشتغلنا على مع هيئه صياغه الدستور على ماده الجنسيه في اللي هي في سنه 2015 اللي تم اعتمادها يوم 19 4 2016 كان هذا شغلنا بالدرجة الأولى ونشتغلوا على توعيات ممكن تكون هي محلية داخل منطقة غات بشكل بسيط جدا وعينا النساء المتجوزات الغير ليبي وعرفناهم بجزء بسيط ومحدود بحقوقهم أن لهم حق في كامرأة ليبية متجوزة غير ليبي وعرفناهم بالحقوق اللي هي تكون لهم هذه بالدرجة الأولى بالنسبة للجمعية. تي رائدة بمصداقية بالنسبة لي لي أنا كشخص مدير مشروع أو الأعضاء اللي كانوا معايا لو كانوا موجودين حيأكدوا على على الكلمة هي إحنا تعلمنا كيف نشتغلوا بالطريقة الصحيحة كانت تدريبات قيمة إحنا خليناها سواء إدارية سواء من ناحية كتابة المشاريع. وكيف أنت تعبي الميزانية وكيف أنت تشتغل عليها وكانت تدريبات قيمة بمصداقية بالنسبة للشغل المرتب بما أن في ضغط من المشرفين لكن ضغط في صالحنا إحنا مش ضدنا تأثير أنت رائد على المجتمع اللي إحنا فيه قضيتنا الأساسية كانت العنف القائم على النوع الاجتماعي وتفعيل قانون 24 لسنة 2010 بشأن أحكام الجنسية الموضوع هذا طبعا اشتغلنا عليه بلدية غات كاملة ما كانوش الناس يعرفوا شنو هو أصلا العنف يشبحوا في العنف إنه عنف إسري عنف ضد الطفل التحرش الاغتصاب لكن احنا عرفناهم ان قضية ابناء الليبيات والمرأة المتجوزة الغير الليبي تعتبر حتى هو تعنيف بالنسبة لها. كانوا عندي زوز مدربين في المشروع، المدرب الاول يعرف عن العنف كامل بجميع انواعه، واللي عندي يوصل لجزئية المرأة الليبية المتجوزة الغير الليبي. والمدرب الثاني كان يخدم على على قانون هو قانوني يخدم على قانون 24 سنة 2010 بشأن الحكم الجنسية 
عرفوا الناس طبعا الميزه اللي كانت كويسه كان فيه معنا هيئه صياغه الدستور كان فيه معنا ممثل عن النواب كان فيه معنا في البلديه كان فيه معنا الاعيان او المهتمين اخذنا من القطاعات اخذنا من القانونيين طبعا التاثير الاساسي اللي كان فيه من الفئه هي ما كانش اصلا يعرف ان في قضيه موجوده او فيه مشاكل موجوده على قد ما انت تحكي ما فيش لكن الميزه او التاثير اللي احنا اصبح ملموس عندنا كبرنامج انتي رائده جمعنا الناس هذم على طاوله واحده وخليناهم هم يكونوا مشاركين معنا اساسيين في الموضوع اللي احنا قاعدين نشتغلوا عليه أنا بالنسبة لي الأولوية هي الدستور ويتضمن هذا الدستور القوانين الدولية المصادقة عليها <تصفيق> When banks advertise for jobs, they want men. Do they put in the job advert that it is only for men to apply? Because you said that some of the jobs in banks are only for men. In IT, about, I'm talking about the IT, I think we, IWPR in Libya and North Africa has always had a very good relationship with the donor community, um, you know, both on the UK side and on the US side. Uh, the, the, the funders that we liaise with and who support us, I think, have understood the, the somewhat fluid environment that, the, well, that we operate in, in the Libyan context. Why you do with women and a lot of But could you talk a little bit about what you do with young people and their role in that same? They've also been very supportive of the kind of programming themes that we've, we've put in front of them and have, you know, indicated needed their support, whether it was media, whether it was civil society, um, you know, whether it was uh, women, whether it was youth, uh, you know, these are all areas that we've identified through our years of experience in this country um, as, as areas where we think programming needs to exist. And, and the UK government has been very receptive in taking those ideas and accepting, you know, our suggestions uh, for programming. But I think specific to Aunt Ureda, the the focus of the UK government on women, on gender, on gender equality uh, has been uh, you know, an, an excellent opportunity for allowing organizations like IWPR and others to design and implement programming that we do think has, uh, you know, a real impact on the ground in Libya. I'm Asma Al-Hajj, Budir Munadama Dihir Al-Tanmiya. مشروع منظمة ديهر التنمية يخص نساء ذوي الإعاقة واللي حاولنا فيه إن نكسر الصورة النمطية لهاد لنظرة الناس للنساء لذوي الإعاقة واللي تتلخص في التركيز على الإعاقة أكثر من التركيز على الشخص ذاته كإنسان فيكون تسليط الضوء بس على نقاط ضعفه ومحاولة الشفقة ويعني و... وننا نحاول إن إحنا نحطوه في جانب الضعيف والمسكين فاحنا هذا في هذا المشروع حاولنا ان احنا نعطوا الجانب الاخر وهو مد اليد للعون لهذه الفئه ونحاول ان احنا نسق قدراتها ونمكنوها لتوظيف امكانياتهم في الطريق الصحيح برنامج انتي رائدة ساعدنا كثير في مشروع دول الإعاقة أعطاني أرضية ثابتة واستراتيجية جديدة في طرح طرح المشاريع وكيف يتحل المشاكل وكيف أنني نكون مركزة على موضوع التقييم والنتائج ويعني أعطاني أعطاني صورة عامة على الأشياء اللي المفروض هي اللي تخليني ينجح مشروعي كمشروع تأثير برنامج أنتي رائدة في مشروعي كان جدا تأثير واضح وملموس لاحظت والتمست في عيون المتدربات وفي نفسي أني كأسمى وكمنظمة ديهية للتنمية أعطانا أرضية 
أرضية صلبة في التعامل مع عدة مواضيع وطرحها خلانا نركزوا على على النتائج وهذه ما كنتش نعرفها هنا قبل كنت ندير في مشاريع لكن بصراحة لم أعل نعطيهاش اي اعتبار النتائج لكن مشروع انت رأي ده ركز على حاجه اسمها نتائج فقعدت اني نبي نطلع باي طريقه بنتيجه في مشروعي والحمد لله يعني يعني طلعت بعده نتائج وقصص نجاح But sometimes just getting that first step happening is all that you need. Well, I don't think anybody should be in any doubt, whether that's the international community, whether that's the Libyan government, whether that's Libyan society, that they don't have an incredibly strong cadre of women um, that are able to achieve quite extraordinary things with very, very limited resources in very, very remote areas with very little support. Uh, and that's one of the, the, the things that has become quite clear um, through this project, that there is expertise um, throughout the female population, throughout the, the male population who happen to be gender champions in all parts of the country, in, even in the most rem the remotest parts in the, in the far southeast, the southwest. Um, and so that, that is something that needs to be exploited by the Libyan government as we move forward uh, and, we, and we work towards much greater gender equality in the future. بالشراكة مع معاد صحافة الحرب والسلام والتمويل من السفارة الوطنية نفذت المرأة مشروع إساءة لطريق الريادة وهو مشروع في التمكين الاقتصادي يهدف إلى تمكين النساء التي لديهن مشاريع صغيرة ومتوسطة والنساء صاحبات أفكار المشاريع وتمكينهم بجميع المهارات اللازمة باش يكونوا رائدات في سوق المال والأعمال. Um, I think I would start off by saying that, uh, you know, to, to disengage in Libya would do a great disservice to, uh, to funding government, you know, to the international community, to international funders, to implementers, but most importantly to our Libyan partners and their beneficiaries within, within uh, Libya. Thank you. There are some, there are some independent or not so independent people counting ballots right now, and we'll have results in a, in a couple of minutes. There is an enormous amount of drive and momentum and goodwill and innovative thinking that goes on uh, organically within the Libyan civil society community. Um, you know, and, and they come up with ideas and activities that, that don't come from us. It doesn't come from IWPR or the international community. They know their communities, they know the needs, and they know what needs to be done in order for them to meet those needs. Um, I think where we come in is we're able to provide, one, some technical training, um, two, some sometimes emotional and moral support, um, and, and, you know, sort of allowing our partners to understand that they're not alone in this. Um, and, and three, obviously, um, with the help of the funders, uh, you know, we're able to make that programming possible. And the winner is DPIA Organization. Oh. I think we've exceeded our aspirations and, and that is because of um, the, um, the wealth of women that are demanding quite rightly the various different rights that, that, that they are owed and are um, lobbying incredibly hard for those, those rights um, and are thinking of, of very creative ways of achieving what they want. Um, so it, it, we've certainly got to a a, a very good 
point and we've got some work to do, but I'm very excited about um, what could be achieved in the third phase. We are extremely proud of these women uh, and their achievements and um, despite the difficult context and environment that they're working in, they still continue to, to persevere um, and to push for their, their gender agenda and it's just so kind of uplifting to see that um, their morale isn't being crushed by the, the circumstances. صراحة يعجز لساني عن شكر وتقدير الاي دبليو بي ار والبي سي اي يعني كانوا كانوا اكثر من من عائله لينا لمده سنه وشكر خاص ايضا للسفاره البريطانيه اللي لولاها ما وصلناش لهذا المشوار الناجح في حياتنا شكرا لكل من دعمونا واخذوا بدينا ويعني يعني انتم درتوا اكثر من اللي حاول اي حد ثاني يديره لنا These organizations are just a small sample of the organizations working in Libya at the community level. And they do it in partnership with citizens, with volunteers, with other government agencies, because they care and they want a prosperous and stable Libya. And they really are the face of Libya. They are, and you know, what really impressed me, what, I, what my biggest takeaway from all of this is just how active organizations are in their own communities addressing real needs and working on behalf of their communities. And these are organizations that demonstrate every day that volunteerism is alive and well in Libya. And it's a terrific thing that they're doing and I'm inspired. And they receive the support of activists in their communities of the government, but also support of the international community. And the British government, the UK embassy in Libya, is to be credited for the support of the anti rada program. Absolutely. They've done it in a way that is being led by the Libyan organizations themselves in terms of their activities, but they've made a long-term commitment over a couple of years to support the organizations to improve their communities. But also to support the organizations in a long term in developing their, their organizational Absolutely. skills and capacities to be even more effective in the communities where they work. Promoting gender equality and the social and economic and political participation of women and girls in Libya is a priority for the British Embassy. Um, and Libya is a focal country for the UK government in our national action plan on women, peace and security. Um, we're incredibly proud um, that we're able to support the amazing work that you do that we've heard about today um, through IWR, um, who we'd also like to thank very much for um, the continued partnership. Um, the presentations that we've heard and the follow-up and the videos have been amazingly inspiring. I feel very inspired by what I've heard today. Um, and I've been particularly struck by the wide range of issues um, affecting women and girls in Libya that you're working on in different ways, um, and the obstacles that you've outlined and the ways you've been able to overcome those to ensure that you've achieved successes within your individual projects. Um, and how you're able to come here today and speak with one another um, and collaborate and coordinate and um, generate ideas of what we can keep doing to support women and girls in Libya. Um, so congratulations, thank you very much for taking the time to be here, thank you very much to everyone who's attended um, and we look forward to seeing what you do next.